one and all to yet another edition of Escape from Vault Disney. I am your host, Tony Goldmark. I am joined once again by Luke Ski. Hi, I did the cover art. Yes, you did. And joining us for the first time here on Escape from Vault Disney, you know him as the producer slash editor slash camera person of Remain Seated with Chris Nebergall, available to watch on YouTube. You know him as the lead singer and rhythm guitarist of the band Inkblot. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matt Fazio. Hey, how you doing? Please like my band on Facebook. We're yes. very we're very poor. We're performing in LA. Please come to our shows. And I'd like to say please like me because I want people to like me. Just Luke's a nice guy. Just like him, dude. Not on Facebook, just in real life. Just like me. <laughs> Give please. him a hug. Go up to him and uh, dump a can of dog food on his head. He likes it. That's <laughs> That's how Wisconsinites show affection. I prefer cycle four. Make sure it's as wet and from the can as possible when you're dumping on them. And if you know what cycle four is, you're my age. Thank you. So we are about to watch an episode of a series called Amphibia, or Disney Amphibia, as it's called. I don't know why they felt the need to add the Disney. We all know these are Disney products. It's Disney Plus. Again, I think Amphibia is probably a trademarked uh, horrible disease that you can catch by staying in a river too long. Well, they want to make sure they differentiate it from Pure Flix Amphibia, (laughs) which is is a recreation of Exodus, specifically about the frogs falling from heaven, and they make it a musical, you know, frogs from heaven. Bah, bah, bah. They're all voiced by uh, Duck Dynasty characters. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> Kirk Cameron's in there for some reason, and <laughs> Dean Cain. Because their version of DuckTales with the Duck Dynasty guys is even weirder. Hi, I'm Kevin Sorbo, and I'm Frogulies. <laughs> So this is an animated series, I believe on Disney XD. It premiered this year. The entire first season of 20 episodes is on Disney+. Plus. We randomly got episode 13, Croak and Punishment slash Trip to the Archives. Now, I have never seen this show. Have either of you seen this show? I've seen clips of it, and that's primarily because I recently met somebody out at one of the Flappers comedy nights for voiceover actors performing called We Talk Funny, which is the first Monday of every month at Flappers in Burbank. Her name is Lila Burzins, and she does a recurring voice on this show. She messaged me a clip of it, and so I watched that to see what her character was, and it seems like a great, funny show to me, so that's pretty much all I've seen, but as a person who has his ear to the ground of what's happening in the animation industry, since I'm looking for a job, I have heard nothing but good things about this show. Matt, have you ever seen it? No, but same as Luke, I've heard um, really good things about it. And generally, Disney animation has been fantastic on the TV front. Gravity Falls was great. Star versus The Forces of Evil, I I enjoyed quite a bit. Milo Murphy. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Well, going all the way back to Phineas and Ferb, I mean, Disney animation is... Wander Over Yonder was an amazing show. Oh, that was yeah, great. Yeah. The new version of DuckTales, which basically is the Disney Afternoon television universe yes. in one show. Oh, I joked about on Facebook, the show was made for me, so it must be weird for regular folks to watch it. Yeah. Because I'm watching, like, there is a direct reference to Mickey's Christmas Carol. Like, how many people besides me would get Mickey- any of this? And they also throw in so many references to the original comics. Like, there was one episode recently where they threw in a character named Bombi the zombie who was banned from the comics for a while for basically being racist they brought him back in a non-racist way they completely changed his design but just in the opening segment when someone mentioned the name of bombie the zombie i'm like holy shit they're doing bombie they're going back to that deep cut oh my god it's like so many easter eggs But we're watching a different show here called (laughs) Amphibia, even though that DuckTales reboot is on Disney+, Plus. I understand. Now, the one thing I've heard about Amphibia is in one of the episodes, possibly the pilot, I'm not sure, Kermit the Frog apparently makes a cameo. Oh, shit. Because as the title suggests, Amphibia, this is about a world of talking frogs or something. Even though we're paused on the first shot here, and it is three human girls, one of whom has a glowing treasure chest that's open in her hand uh, so it's like a Pulp Fiction thing we don't see what's in the chest but perhaps we will once we press play uh, are you guys ready? yes let's do it alright we will be back to tell you what we think of Disney Amphibia episode 13 Croak and Punishment slash Trip to the Archives Yay! We just watched Amphibia, episode 13, Croak and Punishment slash Trip to the Archives. First aired July 8th, 2019. That was cute. 
Yeah, I really like the show. Having seen this one episode, even without the context of the first 12, it makes me want to go back to the beginning and now watch the whole thing. So I'm happy with it. Yeah, I thought it was cute too. None of it really blew me away, I'll say, as far as cartoons go. But yeah, I think it's an absolutely fine show. It's not groundbreaking. It's not quite... Gravity Falls. It's not quite Star versus the Forces of Evil. It seems to be pitched to a younger audience than that. It seems to be pitched to more, say, eight to ten year olds, whereas Gravity Falls was much more, you know, 11 to 13 and older. I mean, it has a huge adult fan base as well. Over at Cartoon Network, the general thing is all of our shows are aimed at children six to 11. Right. And even on OKKO, they made a running gag of like, they would say something like, this is for kids six to 11. And then KO would go, I'm a kid six to 11. Like, so <laughs> They never actually said what his age is, but they kept referring or like talking about his mom's past. That happened over six to 11 years ago. (laughs) That's really interesting because that seems like a really young demographic for some of these shows, which I feel like would be at least until 14 or 15 or something like that. And I remember being at a meeting with some of the big wigs. There were 200 people, employees in the room, and they kept talking about the demographic of six to 11. And then they were saying, well, then Adult Swim is people 18 and over, obviously. And then I asked a question. I'm like, so... Is the network thing in general just that we assume that people ages 12 to 17 have zero interest in watching cartoons? And I guess basically, yeah. What are they watching then? I guess they figure like, well, teenagers, once they hit that age, have no interest in watching cartoons. And I just kind of feel like... I kind of think they're watching cartoons. They're too busy Fortnite dancing to watch cartoons. If they watch the first four seasons of Steven Universe and then turn 12, it's not like they're going to stop. Oh, no. That, no <laughs> oh, that hasn't happened to you yet? Like, oh, my 12th birthday. Oh, I can't watch any more cartoons. Yeah. I Luke, hate everything now. Luke, That's actually have you true. seen my apartment that you're currently sitting in? It's, no, it is amazing. <laughs> As somebody that watched cartoons for way longer than I was supposed to, according to like all of my middle school friends, yeah, there's definitely a point where, I don't know, I guess kids can get mean to you or something about watching cartoons. Luke, 12 to 17 year olds nowadays are just way too busy being indoctrinated into Nazis. That's oh, just okay. by the YouTube algorithm. That's how it works. That's, and that's why we needed <laughs> Jojo Rabbit. The future is doomed. We've gotten way off of amphibia here, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> Although Nazis do have their own frog, don't they? But oh, um, so amphibia I'm, is... I, I hope the people who make the show are listening to this. Hi. We just, Hi. <laughs> how'd you like that last transition? Was that great for you? Oh, uh, we are dynamite here so amphibia is this new show about this magical frog kingdom the main character is this little girl named Anne who gets sucked into the frog kingdom somehow i don't know we Th- through, through the, the magic chest that through we the saw magic chest, chest that yeah. we saw in the opening titles and her best friend is this red frog named sprig and they go on wacky adventures together and try to find a way to get the little girl back to the human world we also don't know what happened to her other friends that were in that introduction right it's something i noticed maybe that's in one of the I other episodes we it, didn't watch maybe they just watched her disappear in, into thin air when the chest opened but that's interesting to have those characters and then we don't see them throughout the show. That's well, they, a little they probably weird. had them there to establish in this opening title sequence that, oh, look, it's the regular human world. There's some humans. And now zap. We're oh, in no, this I'm thinking world. the opposite is that they're lost somewhere else in that world and they just haven't met each other yet. Hmm. Again, we haven't watched the whole show. We just watched this one. Again, episode. this is just based on watching yeah. one episode. So we could be way off. There are going to be people I'm laughing sure. at us. At our yeah, age. people are already <laughs> sending me angry tweets. Please wouldn't post wouldn't your 50 inter- page fan theories Wouldn't to us. Wouldn't it be interesting if this episode happened to be the Starvin Marvin in Space episode of it where it's completely different from everything else? That it's actually done. a show about dogs. It's a show about dogs in space. <laughs> it's, anyway. it's about a rock band and their amps. There's clearly this overarching arc that's happening because a couple of times in the second 11 minute chunk we watched, she mentions oh, we gotta find a way for me to get home. But the 11 minute chunks themselves are very self-contained. It doesn't feel like you really need to have watched the previous episodes in order to get what's going on. In the first one, they decide to become cops because... The title being Croak and Punishment. Croak and Punishment. Sprig has this little glowy shell that he really likes that he wants to give to this girl he has a crush on, Ivy. But he leaves the shell somewhere and he comes back and it's not there anymore, so it's been stolen. And Anne shows him this cell phone video of a cop show, which I believe is called Cop Stop. That was my favorite part of it, where, <laughs> where they showed the fake cop show because it was just, just a, a very quick pastiche uh, montage of scenes you'd see from a typical bad cop show or bad cop movie just to 
briefly explain to Sprig and to any kids at home who haven't seen any of those what they're talking about. And then they decide to go good cop, bad cop. Sprig's not really into being the bad cop at first, and he's kind of weak-willed. And then Anne's like, no, you got to be tough towards these people. So he becomes much more of a tough, bad cop, and then basically turns into a fascist i hate to keep bringing this back to fascist frogs well uh fascism is your answer for everything tony it really is we are talking about cops though yeah because he goes to people's house and just starts breaking stuff and abusing people and knocking people over just turns into a real cop yeah well because Anne has introduced him to violence in this yeah (laughs) This, this is what happens. See, this is a message of what happens when you introduce cops and fascism into a society. Because beforehand, they could just leave shells on fence posts and stuff and trust that they would be fine. And now society has crumbled and nobody trusts anyone anymore. Yes, but the progression of Spriggs increasing anger and bad coppery as the episode continues and then they get to the last suspect is a really funny escalation of the situation it really is and oh, when he's uh, like pushing over the the people <laughs> yeah. that was my favorite part for sure <laughs> and then spoiler alert it turns out the shell was really quote unquote stolen by the very girl he was gonna give it to who yeah, said, yeah. uh the frog has a little crush frog yeah, that's, yeah, that's cute about got this a show. crush on this other yeah. frog named ivy then the second 11 minute segment we watched was called trip to the archives where this older frog named hop pop hop pop voiced by bill farm Farmer, by the way, one of the very few non-Goofy and non-Pluto voices Bill Farmer's ever done. And the character sounds nothing like Goofy. You can't even tell it's Bill Farmer. So finally he gets to show some range beyond that one character. The overall arcing plot of the series seems to be that the character Anne got magically zapped into the world of Amphibia and they are trying to figure out a way for her to get home. They are going to journey to a different part of Amphibia that they have never been in before that has potentially vicious creatures and other such things. So before heading into that part of Amphibia, they are stopping at the archives so that they can study and learn about this part of Amphibia they've never been to before so they can be fully prepared for their trip. And Sprig is very bored by this because he wants to go on a rollicking adventure so he's determined to turn this into a rollicking adventure by essentially locking them in the underground archives and no one ever visits the archives they were the first visitors in like three years there's some throwaway line about that so they're trapped in there and uh, wacky shenanigans ensue as they try to escape and again it's an entertaining show I did really like the character designs of this. It's kind of Gravity Falls, but even simpler. Like, it's even more round and circular and, for lack of a better term, basic. And I don't mean that as a negative, because for a kid's show, you kind of want the designs to be basic. It's like what Matt Groening said. You want your characters to be recognizable even in silhouette. And I think these characters are. This show is very much meant to be a silly, fun cartoon show. A lot of the shows out there like Gravity Falls and Star vs. the Force of Evil and Adventure Time and Steven Universe, which are all awesome and great shows, they have 11-minute episodes that are internalized, but then the whole series turns into this big, like, you know, there's mysteries and there's plot lines and there's threads that last multiple seasons long and, like, whoa, heavy with the mythos. And this show, while it does have an overarching mission of trying to get Anne home, it mainly just seems to be about, hey, we're a funny, silly cartoon show, and if Kyle Carosa was here, I think he would say, sometimes it's just fine for a funny, silly cartoon show to be just that, and let's just watch a show and enjoy it. This show certainly delivers on that for both of these episodes, and I'm excited to see the rest. While we were watching it, Matt, you even said, so this is kind of an Adventure Time type thing. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of my biggest problem with it, is that it does remind me a lot of the other shows that are on the Disney Channel, like Star vs. and Gravity Falls. Obviously, it's not exactly the same as those shows but there is kind of like a a smarminess to it there's kind of like an irony to everything i i point out adventure time because i think that's kind of the catalyst of all of these shows like once adventure time happened like shows got a little bit more self-aware they got a little bit more smarmy hipster for a lack of a better word even though adventure time is very different from all those other oh yeah adventure time is one of the best shows of all time and it's because it really started this trend like before adventure time every show was trying to be spongebob that was the last big show that changed television animation 
And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with trying to do something successful. If you were inspired by Adventure Time and you wanted to make your own version of a show that's like Adventure Time, I, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I do think, though, that as Disney Channel goes on, they can't really be relying on this formula. So something like this, I feel like this is kind of the exact limit of like how many more shows of this tone that they can put out there. I think they got to start doing something different. The only thing I take issue with with everything you just said is your use of the word smarmy. I just kind of feel like that's too much of a negative connotation to well, no, the type I, of humor I, you're trying to go for. That whole kind of tongue-in-cheek, self-aware thing. That is what's happening, though, in these well, shows. Yeah, but I'm just saying it, that smart. I don't think that's necessarily think a negative. A like, it's a word. little snarky. It's a little commenting on how cartoony and silly all this is. It's a smidge full of itself, which, yeah. again, in large amounts, that can be bad. It doesn't go too far with it. It stays in the realm of it still being charming. I do see what Matt is saying in that the type of humor used in the show is not all that dissimilar from the type of humor used in a dozen other shows I could name that have mm-hmm. come up in the last five years or so. And that's just kind of the nature of TV in general. It's like if you have a hit, if you have something that really connects with people, you try to replicate that success. And I don't even think that's a malicious thing. I just think that's the kind of thing TV executives gravitate towards is something similar to what worked in the past. Those are the kinds of pitches they respond to. Because of that aspect, though, it's important to understand that these cartoons aren't made in a vacuum. Like Amphibia isn't the only cartoon to kind of compare this stuff to. We have these other things to look at. So it is important to kind of remember like where things are going, kind of where things came before to see something like Amphibia and think, oh, this is very much like Adventure Time is like all this other stuff. Amphibia is not a groundbreaking show, but it is a perfectly fine it's, show. It's a it's, very acceptable show. Absolutely. It's acceptable TV, as Dan Harmon would say 15 years ago. A couple notes, some pretty good lines of dialogue. One of my notes just says, dehydrated, mummified bodies clawing at the door. (laughs) That was in the archives. I forget the exact line. This gang has been through a lot, and we're going to make it through this, too. I mean, we better, because if we don't, we'll be trapped here for weeks. No food, no water, until they find our dehydrated, mummified bodies clawing at the door. Yeah, I probably could have ended that speech earlier. It made my notes, at the very least. (laughs) There was a weird moment. They realize, oh, maybe we can escape through the skylight. And Anne tries to crawl out, and she gets stuck, even though she gets her head all the way through. And if you look at her character design, her head is easily the thickest part of her body. Like, the rest of her is just really skinny, and her head's way wider than the rest of her so getting her head through should be fine but again cartoon logic i think the idea was that she got her hands up through the hole but then her arms that was the part where she got stuck because her arms were folded up in there there's some good voice talent on this show i know i heard steven root at one point john dimaggio kevin michael richardson yeah the, um, the usual gang of people you hear on every animated show pretty much I looked up some info on the creator, Matt Braley. He was a former storyboard artist and storyboard revisionist for Gravity Falls. He's credited on a bunch of episodes of that. He's credited as a writer and storyboard artist on an episode of Steven Universe and an episode of Big City Greens. And one interesting little blip in his IMDb filmography, he was a storyboard artist on Turbo, the DreamWorks movie about the snail that could race really fast. A totally fine 7 out of 10 movie. I never saw it. It's okay? <laughs> it's fine. It's right when DreamWorks stopped making abysmal movies. If you remember right. that period where they're making nothing, then all of a sudden, oh, actually, it's not the worst thing in the oh, world to see terrible. a DreamWorks movie. Yeah. DreamWorks has just been all over the place as oh, far as it's, quality. Like, it's y- so you bad. You never yeah. know when you're going to get How to Train Your Dragon or Shark Tale. I think it's, there's got to be multiple teams at DreamWorks. Absolutely. Luckily, nothing has been as bad as Shark Tale in a long time. Not in a while. Yeah, we haven't had something that bad. Give them time, though, again. I don't um, think so. I think we're kind of past those days, hopefully. One character I really thought was interesting in this show, in the cop episode, one of the people they interrogate, or one of the frogs they interrogate, rather, is this southern bumpkin-type character named Gunther. Yeah, a real idiot, kind of. Yeah, just an absolute moron. He's got that southern bumpkin type of voice. (laughs) It just seemed like a real complete idiot piece of shit. Did you guys hear something? Um, uh, hang on. It's rude to interrupt the podcast like this, but okay. Ah, hello there. Gunther? 
Yeah, in 3D. Oh, well, it's Gunther, ladies and gentlemen. Gunther right, from Anthony. It's, Anth- it's, it's TV's Gunther. Thanks for remembering me from season one, episode 13 of Amphibia. Wow, this is indeed quite yeah. a treat. We literally just watched you on TV. What Did are the really? odds? So what was your experience like making this episode? Well... It started off one day where it was a storyboard, you see? It's called a storyboard. Luke was a storyboard artist at the really? uh, Mighty Magisaurus. Really? Oh, so Luke knows everything there is to know, then, about my conception. Well, not your conception specifically. I don't think he worked on that show, well, but... Yeah, okay, I'll tell you a little bit. We keep hearing from storyboard artists about the tools of their trade and their craft, mm-hmm. but we've yeah. never heard about this from the point of view of a character. All right, well... Except for that one DCA attraction I'm just remembering with Mushu. But let's hear it from your perspective. Of course. Okay, so... So, you know when you're you're on the 210 freeway <laughs> Uh-huh. And yeah, I'm following you're st- you. You're stuck in traffic cuz there's an accident far away. Okay. And nobody needs to stop and look at the accident, but every single person on the freeway looks at the accident. Yeah, that's annoying. Well, that's nothing like how a storyboard works. Oh, so, okay. Anyways, it started off like this. It was dark. It was dark. Dark. It was Doc Brown? D-A-R-K. Oh, Dark. Okay. Thank you. I didn't realize Doc Brown was a cartoonist. Yeah, yeah. I know he was a cartoon at one point yeah, in the 90s, course, but... but... Anyways, it was really dark. It was really Doc Brown, yes. It was Dark Brown. I... But you're not a Dark Brown character. You're more greenish. Yeah, but it was dark. Uh, I don't know what else you want me to tell you. Well, you see, that's because they're using black to draw you. Yes, right. Yes, it contrasted yes. against the white. So once the black was arranged in a certain way, it formed an image that looked like you that they could then use yeah. to tell the story. But you are the black pencil marks on the paper, so you, I would think it would be the opposite of black. It would be all white for you. Do you feel like each part of you, as it's being drawn, like the head's drawn first, you just feel that, and then if a leg's drawn, you start to feel that as well? Do you remember what, what it was like to be born? I mean, well, none of us do. What, what do you mean, drawn? Well, uh... Well, drawn. You're you're drawn on a piece of paper, and then you're... Did you missed the part where I said in 3D? Well, sure, but you're a cartoon character in real life. Well, what's but... a cartoon character? You told us you were storyboarded. Yeah. Like five minutes ago. Isn't that what conception is called? Is that what is, they told you? Is, is that yeah. just... Oh, okay, let me... Is this okay. what they told you at Disney when you were born? They said you were storyboarded, and you just assumed that it was like birth. Well, is what's that... Disney? Where do, you, is, where do you live? Do you live, I live in, in Amphibia? You live in Okay. Okay, well how did you get how did you get here? <laughs> he took the two ten. Well, I took the two ten. Yeah, how else oh, would I know about the two ten? He's late. We don't Tony. have the there was an accident. In now an interesting thing happens in this episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you get really angry at one point because Sprig comes in and basically just starts breaking all your shit. Yeah. And you basically turn into the frog version of the Hulk. Which Disney also owns, of course. Well, yeah, you see, Disney owns the Avengers. So when they were drawing me, they said, let's make a frog version Boy, of the Hulk. you just said drawing. <laughs> You're drawing. So are you drawing or not? No, no, no. That was some other guy who said that. That was oh, okay. another frog. That was Kermit. Okay. Um, yeah, but yeah. Kermit's here, too? Yeah, he's here somewhere. Kermit! Hi, right, oh, Oh, oh there he is! There we he got is. Kermit the Frog here too. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, there was this thing over here on the side with Salacious Crumb, you know, over here in uh, in Batu. It was quite lovely there, and uh, great to see. Uh, you sound more like Pete Puma. <laughs> yeah, Kirby, you sound a little sick. Over there, Matt. I thought Matt Vogel I was, was very, bad. I, I was very good friends with Beanie and Cecil. I will, I will let Kermit, you know. Kermit, I have a question. Yeah, are you voiced by Steve Whitmire right now? Or are you voiced by, uh, is it Matt Vogel? I'm pretty sure I'm Matt Vogel at the moment. Uh, well, okay. it's played by, because they don't just do the voices. They oh, operate yeah, yeah. That, They true. operate the poor. Whereas true. with you, it's just some actor doing well, the vocal. Well, no, no, no. See, even... no one provides my voice. I am a sentient creature, oh, Tony. Oh, of course. Even in Amphibia, we are sentient creatures. What is it like to live in Amphibia? Do you enjoy it? Do you have neighbors? Well, um, here's my daily routine. I wake up. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure everyone's daily routines begins with waking up. And then I go back to bed. Oh, that's your entire life? Yep. What do you do for a living in Amphibia? Well, I wait for season one, episode 13 to come back on reruns. Oh, okay. And then I relive that same day. Oh. That's about it. So it's yeah, a, like a, So you're like trapped in a Groundhog Day loop? Uh, uh, just Tony, that would be a, a Ground Frog Day loop. Oh, a Ground Frog Day. <laughs> ground so you're Frog trapped Day. In a ground... please, yeah, please don't insult Gunther like that. So you're that. trapped yeah. in a Ground Frog Day loop of this happening over and over again to you? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. That, How do you that keep sounds... such a cheery disposition with that horrifying existential knowledge? 
What do you mean horrifying existential knowledge? Isn't well, this everyone's you, life? Well, you're clearly aware that this is happening to you. Yeah. So, I mean, Bill Murray in Groundfrog Day, he went through a whole character arc because yeah. he was trapped in this abnormal yes, situation. Yes. How many times have you relived this one day over and over again now? Well, a better question would be how many times have you lived this one day over and over now? Once. I'm still going through the first time. I mean, I could wake up tomorrow and have to do this whole day all over well, again. Yeah, even, time moves forward for us. An even better question for you. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? Are there really that many, though? I can think of maybe Somewhere three? over the rainbow. Somewhere over the rainbow. The rainbow connection. Rainbow connection. Well, uh, She's a Rainbow by the Rolling Stones. She's a Rainbow. Okay. I know Ween has a song called Rainbow. There's the band Rainbow. Do we want to just open up someone's iTunes and search for the word Rainbow? I know there's an Insane Clown Posse song with the word Rainbow in the title. Okay. Throwing Toasters has a song called Rainbow's End. That's all I can think of, and only one or two of those are, are anything I'd call hits. So, What does any of this have to do with Amphibia? I have no idea. Well, you're talking to a character from a show. I think of it course. has everything to do with Amphibia. I'm like half confused about how much you actually understand about your life. How much you're aware, how well you are kind of getting along Well, you here. see, it's a little hard doing this character because I've only seen one episode of this <laughs> Are television. you a character? Wait, are I, you... wait, I thought you were, you were a real no, person. I'm a sentient, I'm a sentient, I'm a sentient being. <laughs> You're a sentient being. You're not playing a character right now. I can see a cartoon frog right here. You came through the door. We we heard it. You're talking to us right now. You're on mic. Mic? You mean like... That thing you're holding... You mean like Mike from uh, Mike's Pizza? No, I mean the microphone you're holding in your hand right now. You're webbed in your web. No, you really are stupid. You really are a southern bumpkin. Well, yeah. I feel like breaking some of your stuff. That yeah. may be true. <laughs> I'm going to break your stuff right God now. God damn it, Gunther, you are a justified <laughs> cop, and I am upset. I just so what? <laughs> what did I suck. justify? <laughs> we are here to break all your stuff, good. I'm going to throw you against the wall. This is terrible. <laughs> you are a piece of shit, Gunther. You <laughs> are real. I have to say, before you throw me against the wall again, is this... The weirdest episode you have ever placed on your YouTube channel. This is only episode four of this podcast. Wait, you know about my YouTube channel? Yeah, we all love your YouTube channel on Amphibia. Oh, really? Yeah, Tony Goldmark. You've seen Some Jerk with a Camera and One well, Movie Later and all yeah, that? Yeah, but my favorite episode, it was a One Movie Later uh-huh. about a little film called Wonder Park. Oh, oh, I was in that one, actually. Were you really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I only saw the first two minutes, so... Uh, so you just got bored and you stopped watching, or...? Well, only two minutes stream. So wait, it's your favorite episode, but you've only seen the first two yeah. minutes? Yeah. So what did you think of the movie, Wonder Park? Well, the first two minutes were great. Oh. Wait, do you just watch the first two minutes of everything? Yeah. So do you think one movie later is just a show about Tony Goldmark talking in his car? Yeah. Isn't that whatever one movie later it's about? Some of these episodes, I'm sure, have ended very abruptly for you. Do they just automatically cut off at the two-minute mark? Is that how, is that how YouTube works in Amphibia? Well, what's YouTube? How are you watching How are you these? watching this video? Through YouTube. You just what? asked what YouTube was. Okay, you're trolling us at this point. Have you paid for the kind of prescription level called YouTube Green? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's how YouTube Green works. It only shows you the first two minutes well, of every yeah, video. I, I use YouTube Green. I pay a monthly subscription fee. Okay. How much is that? Uh, about five insects. Oh, okay. I, I assume that's the money of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That We're I, just going to assume. We don't why know. Not? We've only watched one episode. Absolutely. I apologize to any diehard well, Amphibia fans. There. You live well, there, yeah, so you should know. And I my mean... internet service is called Verflyzen Wireless. Ah. It's about 20 insects. Do you month. eat flies? Is that stereotype I accurate? actually, I'm a toad with a saber tooth uh, ah. underbite. I eat animals. So I eat mice and rabbits. And cats. Well, flies are dogs. technically animals. Well, no, you eat the fly donuts in the show when you're in the giant hole That's form. Right, I right, do right, remember right, that. I don't remember that part. It's not like it happens to me every day. What do you think I am? Some kind of a Groundhog Day character? I think you're a very a confused toad, Gunther, is yes. what I think. And in the credits of this episode, it says I was voiced by somebody named Chris Sullivan. Oh, from This Is Us? Yeah. But my question is, I'm voiced by myself. Notice. Which is Chris Sullivan. So your real name is Chris Sullivan. No, no, no. My real name is Gunther. What's your last name, by the way? Thur. So your name is Gun Thur. Yeah. Gun Gunther Thur. Gunther. Gunther. He's Gunther from the Thur. South. The first name Gun is very... First name, that's a very... That's yeah, a everyone, name. The only way to stop a bad guy with a Gunther is a good guy with a Gunther. Yeah, of course. Do they have yeah. guns in Amphibia? Yeah, yeah it's, it's called a tongue. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, okay. Oh, did they shoot out? Are people fighting for tongue control laws? Yes, unfortunately, it's a really big problem. But wow. there's not a lot of violence. There's no cops in Amphibia. Or well, there's so much violence. Well, that's because that there's, there's no, no, no for... problems in Amphibia. That's true. No problems at all. Oh, really. No problems. How's the health care in Amphibia? Second to none. Let me ask you this, Gunther. I don't know how much the rules of frogs in this world also yeah. apply to the frogs from Amphibia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I were to touch you, would it give me warts? That is a racist stereotype. I apologize. I don't Tony, like. I think a specious stereotype. Tony, I think that's just yeah, a myth. The... What? A myth. Myth. Yes. Wow, you guys have the Muppet movie out here? Oh, yeah. It's streaming on Disney Plus, as a matter of fact. Wow, I love all one hour and something of it. Well, isn't that nice? It's the only movie he's seen the entirety of. So this is voluntary on your part. You just, as a moral rule, you stop watching videos after the two-minute mark. When did I say that? I don't know. Oh, uh, well. I've I'm, only talking, seen the I'm fir- talking to a cartoon frog. I've I- only seen the first two minutes of the Muppet movie. I'm oh, right. really? But okay. I somehow understand the myth reference, which is about 20 minutes in. Are you a hallucinogenic frog? Because I know some. Yes, I am. Oh, if you really? had a conversation with me, I'm hallucinogenic right now. Oh, I believe really? it because I feel like I'm hallucinating this entire conversation this is weird. right now. Just from being in the same room with you, I'm just the vapors I'm getting off you are kind of getting me a little buzzed. I got to be honest. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm feeling I'm the fine. contact high from here. You want to give me a lick? Is that are okay? You offering? I mean, I don't want to. I don't want. Is that going to be weird, Gunther? If we're just pose. looking at you to get I, high? Yeah, let me just. Take, I don't want to cross any boundaries. Let me just take off my shirt. Okay. Take your pants off, too, if you Absolutely. can. Absolutely. All right. Both of your pants. Both of my pants. Consensually, Gunther. A, we would love to consensually. Well, I volunteered. There you go. Like you brought it up. Uh, yeah, let's pass Gunther around, guys. Let's give him a lick. Uh, none for me. I'm driving. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Matt, you want to take the first hit? I would love to. All right. <sighs> All right. Well, don't bogart the Gunther, man. <laughs> that tickled. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's some good shit. You are some good <laughs> shit, Gunther. I got the giggles. Gunther, you're all right in my book. Gunther, do you get high if you lick us? You want to try? <laughs> do you want to try <laughs> licking me, Gunther? I'm good. I mean, t- maybe you'll tit get, for tat, man. Maybe you'll get human zits if you lick me. <laughs> this I, is what YouTube's all about. Oh, I just well, like this to... is a podcast, Gunther. Do you know what a podcast is? Uh, yeah, watch them all the time. Okay. <laughs> um, I'd just like to say to the creators of Amphibia who may be listening, I am a storyboard artist for hire, so please give me a job so that I can escape this existentialist nightmare that I am currently living. Shut up, Luke. This, you this will is... be our monkey forever. This is what happens when you don't hire a storyboard artist. This is what happens when you create a character like Gunther. Somebody makes fun of him. I hope <laughs> Gunther's in another episode of the show. So, I we, see, see, let's look it up. Let's can we see look at if, if let's is... go on Amphibia Wiki? <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> I'm sure there is one. I'm looking it up on my fly phone. Gunther, have you ever looked up like fan art of yourself on DeviantArt? Oh, I should. Let me look that up. <laughs> I would maybe put safe search on before you do that. All right, www.luke.ski portfolios <laughs> animatics. <laughs> Art from my work on Mighty Magic Swords. Gunther, Three DVD years, art. professional experience. Disney Storyboard Plus, Pro. I'll just give you Who guys Who told coffee? you you were allowed to speak, Luke? This is insubordination. Well, this entire conversation is riveting. Oh, my God. Ah, ah. Well, I don't know about a lot of pictures of Anne. Man, I don't know about... <laughs> God damn it. I don't Gunther, know. no. I don't, don't know. look at those pictures. <laughs> Anne's like 12, I assume. <laughs> Matt, I don't know. ages 6 to 11, for God's sake. <laughs> I don't know reason. about you, Matt, but that Gunther's really starting to kick in. Oh my, Whoa. For some reason, <laughs> there's a picture of Timmy Turner, Steven Universe, Kenny from South Let Park, me see, I, I need to see SpongeBob, this. and the writing in Cosmo from Fairly Odd Parents. Honestly, this is more upsetting than any porn I would have seen <laughs> from this. I can see through time. It's about as bad as the old Sonic design. This is like actually depressing oh my god and spongebob <laughs> is crying for some reason in this picture it makes no sense wow there's veggie tail veggie team gunther were you involved in this did you, you sign you, off on any did of you, i'm actually we, a, a demon artist, artist we, we, <laughs> oh really <laughs> we need to cancel the internet has anyone looked up to see if he's in any other episode right. i thought you were doing that I'm are you trying. too are I, you too high to fucking on, use I, your I'm, phone now tony i'm working on it oh my oh, god chris sullivan also played taser face in guardians 2 <laughs> Ooh. I'm on the fandom wiki for Amphibia. Oh, Gunther, do you have a cell phone? Do they have those in Amphibia? Yeah, it's a fly phone 8. It's a f- God damn. The voice of Chris Sullivan, Southern Tusk Frog. First episode appeared in Croak and Punishment. So unfortunately, 
So I that's your one and only in, episode. Yeah, I have not been in another episode. Well, maybe well, like, let's get the letter writing campaign started now so that we can bring Gunther back as a yeah, regular give, in season two. Yeah, I given think you're own, good enough to be in another give episode. Give him his own spin off, honestly. That that is, it'll be called Gunther and Ferb. Do it exactly like the 70s Incredible Hulk series, all where right. it's all about the duality of you turning from frog to frog monster. Yeah, you know, I'd be okay do, with that do, as long as I could be played by a pro wrestler. Do, 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 Absolutely. Do, do. So I think there's only uh, one more question we need to ask here on this episode of Escape from Vault Disney, and that it's, is... It's what has become of our lives. Is that... <laughs> well, two more questions. The other being, what's the attraction? Yeah. So now that Amphibia is going to be this huge hit, especially with Disney Plus carrying it, it's going to be the most watched thing on Disney Plus, obviously. How are the parks going to capitalize on that? Gunther. Lick the toads, wild ride. You oh, yeah. start the ride by licking a naked Gunther mm-hmm. instead of a high check, and then you get in your motor car, and you go through the wildest acid trip in the wilderness. But what's the ride like? You should know. You licked my butt. Wait, that was your butt? Yeah, you didn't see the cheeks? Oh, God. Well, now I feel dirty. Uh, Matt, what's now the attraction? You feel dirty. <laughs> Don't shame me. Don't kink shame me. Sorry, Matt. I won't judge. <laughs> Matt. I think the ride is just Gunther with a PowerPoint slide just going through DeviantArt pictures of himself and going, Look at this! Look at this! The carousel of Gunther. Veggie teens! Luke! Well, I'd say... Country Toad Jamboree! Also, when you come in through the security thing at the tram, everyone has to remove one shoe so that you match the character Anne, who only wears one shoe. Well, as usual, you're all wrong. What they are going to do is bring back Muppet Vision 3D, but digitally replace Kermit with Gunther. <laughs> Kermit, what do you have to say about that? You've been in the corner this whole time, just kind of meekly watching us horrified. Well, you know, Tony, uh, when Disney bought Lucasfilm, Star Wars, they paid $4 billion. And when they bought the Marvel franchise, they paid $4 billion. And when they bought Pixar, it was somewhere in the vicinity, I think, $7 billion. They bought the Muppets franchise from the Jim Henson Company for... $75 $75 million. Million with an M. Wow. So hmm. $0.075 billion. So basically, to Disney, the Muppets is just something they bought at a garage sale. We just I'm kind sorry of to hear that. Yeah, Kermit. we just kind of sit there and we don't get any representation in the parks. With well, the you're except- still at Disney World. But yes, in yes. Florida, I mean, but- they're kind enough to leave my buddy Jim's last film up there for the world to see in. One place and one place only. And, oh, that's, uh, that's rough. And there's like half a gift shop left. My friend Ryan was just recently at that park, and literally at that gift shop, there is one remaining kiosk selling Muppet stuff. And it's only like one half of that kiosk, so I'm really sorry about that. It's Muppet Babies, too. It's not even regular Muppets. Yeah. You know, it's the young people. They're coming to replace us, and we yeah. need to stop these damn millennials. The good news is there will be new Muppet content on Disney Plus in the future, so maybe you'll review it on the show here. Kermit! Kermit. That's very Kermit. possible. That- Kermit! But Sam oh. Eagle! Hi, Sam. You're not supposed to talk about that Disney Plus series. Is that weasel lawyer guy going to come after me because of that whole NDA yes. we had to sign? It is a disgrace that you have talked about it openly. So I'm pretty sure we were talking about Amphibia at one point. Oh, I don't um, know. I, that sounds so, that doesn't sound right. So final verdict, guys, is Amphibia, just based on the one episode we've seen, Disney Plus or Disney Minus? Luke. Big Disney Plus. Looking forward to watching the rest of it. Matt. Definitely Disney Plus. Uh, I want to watch more of it. I would also recommend, if you like the style of the show, to watch Over the Garden Wall, a show more people need to know about because it was amazing. Gunther. Disney Plus. Kermit. Disney Plus. Yay! (laughs) Sam Eagle. The American Plus. Well, I agree with all of you. It is unanimous. Amphibia is a Disney Plus. I can't quite say it's going to be appointment viewing for me from now on, but if it's on, I might watch it. I might check out a couple other episodes. I'm going to just work in a plug that for those of you who are fans of awesome cartoons that are silly, like Amphibia, uh, over on Hulu, they finally dropped the second half of season two of Mighty Magiswords. Woo! So go to Hulu.com or whatever device you watch it on and check out all 92 episodes of Mighty Magiswords, about 25% of which I did the storyboarding on. 
And sometimes you hear my voice too. Also, I want to say, please check out Remain Seated. It's coming back in a big way. We've got a a very special multi-part episode that we're going to release. It's going to be really good. Chris and I are very excited about it. And please check out my band, Inkblot. We're on Facebook, Inkblot the Band, Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube. And we play all around uh, Los Angeles. So look out for us. I would like to plug a return appearance for Gunther. In season two of Disney Amphibia. We're all going to fight for that. We'll start the petition now. We are going to start a GoFundMe. We are going to start a Patreon. We are going to start everything we can to get Gunther back in season two. Right, Sam? Thank you. Would you be willing to do the honors of reading off the next movie we are going to cover on the next episode of Escape from Vault Disney? Why, yes, I would. All right. Smart House, initiate random shuffle mode, please. Initiating random shuffle mode. Make a selection. And the winner is... Twas the Night, parentheses, 2001. Twas the Night... Never heard of it. I imagine that's a Christmas movie of some sort. Maybe a made-for-TV one? I'd assume so. I don't remember that being a theatrical release. All right, join us next week here on Escape from Vault Disney when we will cover 2001's Twas the Night. You are all weirdos.